On his first day in this administration, the president put forth a comprehensive immigration legislation. Uh, and that's to show how seriously he took this, uh, how important he, un how he understood that the system had been broken, it needs to be modernized, be, uh, be moved to the 21st century. And so this is something that the president has talked about. Uh, he uh, has asked Congress uh, to take action, Republicans in Congress to take action and to take and to work on this in a, in a bipartisan way. He's going to continue to do that. In the meantime, uh, he's put forth uh, some, he has tools that he's used to, to make sure that we do this, we actually deal with the immigration system in a humane way, uh, and in a, in a way that is, uh, uh, that actually deals with what we're seeing at the border. And that's why you've seen the parolee program be so successful. Uh, it has, it has, um, it has uh, uh, when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down uh, by more than 90 percent. And that's because of this act, the actions that this president has taken. But we know that more action needs to be taken. So it has to be legislative action. We're going to continue to call Congress uh, to do that. Uh, and so this is important to this president. On day one, on day one, he put forth a, a, a legislation uh, to move forward on this. Do you think the Republicans are to blame for this? Well, the, as we've seen, Republicans have continued to use this as a political stunt, uh, a political tool, and not actually come to the table to have a conversation on how to protect dreamers and farm workers. Uh, you know, more immigration judges and asylum office officers are needed. More funding for border security are needed. This is something that we have put forward in that legislation and so much more. And they don't want to do that. They want to do political stunts, as we've seen from governors and mayors across the country. Thank you. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services has announced a trio of efforts to increase efficiency and reduce burdens to the overall legal immigration system. USCIS will set new agency-wide backlog reduction goals, expand premium processing to additional form types, and work to improve timely access to employment authorization documents. This is a sudden feature of the questions to see how best you can help you out your process. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Now let's continue to watch the video and find out what's new in U.S. immigration. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic and resource constraints resulting from the prior administration, USCIS inherited a significant number of pending cases and increased processing times. Through today's actions by the Biden administration, USCIS is acting to reduce these caseloads and processing times, while also ensuring that fair and efficient services are available to applicants and petitioners. Now, let's look at announcements in details. Number 1. Expanding premium processing to more categories. USCIS has been implementing the premium processing availability for variety of application categories. USCIS will adhere to the congressional requirement that the expansion of premium processing must not cause an increase in processing times for regular immigration benefit requests. Premium processing is an expedited adjudication service now available only to petitioners filing a Form I-129, Petition for a Non-Immigrant Worker, and to certain employment-based immigrant visa petitioners filing a Form I-140, Immigrant Petition for Alien Workers. In 2022, this final rule added new categories of forms for premium processing services, including Form I-539, Application to Extend Slash Change Non-Immigrant Status, Form I-765, Application for Employment Authorization, and additional classifications under Form I-140. And now as of March 6, 2023, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services announced the expansion of premium processing for certain F-1 students seeking optional practical training, OPT, and F-1 students seeking science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, OPT extensions who have a pending Form I-765, application for employment authorization, and wish to request a premium processing upgrade. The availability of premium processing for certain F-1 students, in addition to the ease of online filing, will streamline the immigration experience for a great many international students. The ongoing expansion of online filing is a priority for USCIS as we continue to create operational efficiencies and increase access to the immigration system for stakeholders, applicants, petitioners, requesters, and those we serve, said USCIS Director Yoram Jadu. Number 2. Reducing Processing Backlogs 
USCIS is setting new internal cycle time goals to reduce its caseload. These internal metrics drive us as workers' backlog reduction efforts and affect case processing time. Cycle times increase, processing times follow, and applicants and petitioners receive judgments faster. By FI 2024, USIS will increase capacity, technology, and staffing to meet these targets. The agency's publicly posted processing times show the average amount of time it took USIS to process a particular form, from when the agency received the application until a decision was made on the case. Internally, USCIS monitors the number of pending cases in the agency's workload through a metric called cycle times. A cycle time measures how many months' worth of pending cases for a particular form are awaiting a decision. As an internal management metric, cycle times are generally comparable to the agency's publicly posted median processing times. Cycle times are what the operational divisions of USCIS use to gauge how much progress the agency is, or is not, making on reducing our backlog and overall case processing times. Number 3. Improving Access to Employment Authorization Documents USCIS continues to make progress toward a temporary final rule currently named Temporary Increase of the Automatic Extension Period of Employment Authorization and Documentation for Certain Renewal Applicants. In recent months, USCIS has begun streamlining many EAD processes, including extending validity periods for certain EADs and providing expedited work authorization renewals for healthcare and childcare workers. The temporary final rule aims to build on this progress and to ensure certain individuals will not lose their work authorization status while their applications are pending. I hope you guys found this video extremely helpful. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, definitely make sure to share this video with them. We are all about empowering you with knowledge. So the more people that can benefit from this video, the more people we want watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs icon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for more immigration updates. Bye!